You know what sounds phenomenal on the DCS Bartok? Bartok. And literally any other composer or songwriter or performer you can think of. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our review videos. And click the cute little bell to be notified when we post new content. This masterful looking box is the DCS Bartok. It's a combination DAC, music streamer, preamp, and headphone amp. The headphone amp is an optional add-on, but here we've got the version with the headphone amp because we're Moon Audio and we love headphones. The Bartok with headphone amp costs $18,500. Now, you're likely wondering what you get for that price. In short, an elegant and well-built exterior that houses cutting-edge technology and produces some of the most resolving and realistic sound that I've ever heard. The Bartok is the perfect solution for those who listen to music from a variety of sources. You can stream music from Tidal, Cobas, Deezer, and internet radio, personal audio devices, Apple devices via AirPlay, and storage devices. The streaming interface supports all major lossless codecs, as well as DSD in native and DOP formats. The network interface can perform full MQA decoding and rendering, and everything is controlled by the DCS Mosaic app. Plus, the Bartok is room ready if you prefer to use that for your high res streaming. So let's jump right in and start with the Class A headphone amplifier. It's a custom design that works extremely well with both high and low impedance headphones in balanced or unbalanced formats. It's got dedicated power supplies for analog and digital processing, isolated from the DAC section. Now the headphone amp uses DCS's patent pending Expanse technology, which is designed to bring the headphone experience closer to the studio experience. Its unique processing method replicates the effect of studio listening, where sound is projected into the space around us rather than inside of our heads, without altering the reverb in a recording or affecting a system's performance. Now, something we really like about the Bartok is its future-proof design. The firmware can be manually or automatically updated, allowing DCS to add new features and improve the performance of the Bartok over its lifetime. So you're not just spending for today, but investing for tomorrow. So the Bartok has an elegant and minimalistic aesthetic, and it's built like a tank. It's available in black or silver, and it's crafted from aerospace grade machined aluminum with internal acoustic damping panels to reduce sound degrading mechanical vibration and magnetic effects. Now the box measures 17 inches deep, about four and a half inches high and 17.5 inches long, and it weighs about 37 pounds. It's not small. Its edges are quite sharp, which I suppose could lend an industrial look, but I don't think that's the case. I think the aesthetic is quite elegant. So the front panel has a very clean and uncluttered appearance. It's got a high resolution display screen. You've got several buttons here, power, menu, filter, input, output, and mute. You've got two headphone inputs, a four pin balanced XLR and a quarter inch and a small volume knob. The rear panel of the Bartok contains the connections for balanced and unbalanced analog audio outputs, as well as SP diff, coaxial and Toslink, AES and USB inputs for connection to the computer and or formatted flash drive or NAS drive. There are also Ethernet and IEC connectors, as well as connectors for adding an external master clock should you choose to do so. Now the heart and soul of the Bartok is DCS's proprietary ring DAC. Now before I go any further, I'm going to give an overview here, but we will be doing a more in-depth video looking at the internals of the Bartok. So DCS builds its ring DACs from the ground up. There are no off-the-shelf DAC chips. Now, as you probably know, digital to analog conversion is fundamental to our being able to enjoy digital audio. 
Because sound is analog, and when sound or music is recorded, it is then converted into digital files that can be stored on your device. In order to play back that music, it needs to be converted back to analog. This is where a DAC comes in. A DAC translates digital audio into analog voltage that is used to drive your headphones or speakers. Now, digital audio is stored in binary format, ones and zeros, as a series of samples. The number of consecutive binary digits that are used to represent the original sound wave is called bit depth. 16-bit audio, for example, as in CDs, has 16 consecutive binary digits, either ones or zeros. Now, a DAC needs to translate these binary numbers into analog voltage. This is what drives your headphones or speakers to make sound. A DAC does this by using a series of current sources, or electronic components, that each generate an analog voltage. Now, in one type of DAC, called a ladder DAC, one current source is always working for one of the digital audio bits exclusively. Think of it this way. One current source will always be following what the first bit in the digital audio signal is doing, and so on for as many current sources as needed. As the current sources go on, the amount of energy they must generate gets smaller and smaller. If you were to look at a diagram of this process, it would resemble a ladder. But there are inherent issues with ladder DACs. Resistors, like all electronic components, have an element of error in their values. For resistors used in a ladder DAC, the current generated by that section of the DAC could be lower or higher than is needed. This, plus another issue with ladder DACs called zero crossing point distortion, leads to linear distortion in ladder DACs. DCS's ring DAC seeks to correct the issues that are inherent in ladder DACs. The ring DAC uses a network of FPGAs, or field programmable gate arrays, that are running proprietary DCS software that performs the digital to analog conversion, as well as the digital filtering. A key point here is that the ladder DAC removes the link between the original signal and the physical resistor value errors associated with specific sample values. A couple of things to note about the ring DAC that makes it different from a ladder DAC. One, the ring DAC uses current sources of equal value. And two, the ring DAC does not use the same current source for the same bit every time. Featuring DXD upsampling as standard, the ring DAC's multi-stage oversampling design offers optional DSD upsampling plus a selection of DSP filters that allow you to tweak the sound to your taste. You've got four DSD filters plus six PCM filters. I played around with the PCM filters, which are simply labeled filter one through six. I found the differences to be subtle, with filter four offering a discernible lift in warmth and fullness to the sound. Now let's talk clocking. DCS is a pioneer in the use of external clocks in digital audio systems, using quartz crystal oscillators as the basis of its clocking systems. Now, in audio systems with multiple units, an external clock helps to ensure that all of the components, like DACs and streamers, are operating in sync. This is important for reducing the occurrence of jitter. Jitter refers to time distortions in the playback of a digital audio signal, which can significantly degrade audio quality. In the digital world, everything operates at the sample rate. This is how frequently snapshots of bits of information are taken. In the case of a DAC, for example, one of its main tasks is to convert digital audio samples into analog signals. The timing of this process is crucial to ensuring that the audio we hear is an accurate representation of a musical event. If audio signals aren't converted by the DAC at just the right moment, you get an artificially distorted version of the music. When you're running multiple audio devices that are processing the same audio, you need something that will keep playback in sync, regardless of the sample rate. That something is a master clock. While the DAC and the Bartok could be considered to act as a master clock, tests have shown that there is no substitute for having a dedicated clock. Having an external master clock allows DCS to isolate a clock's sensitive circuitry from the other circuits within a system and ensure that the clock signals aren't affected by crosstalk or electromagnetic leakage, physical movement, such as the act of a disk spinning, or power interference, which can occur when multiple circuits are fed with the same power supply. With a master clock in place, all aspects of the sound are enhanced, from detail and imaging to rhythmic movement and flow. 
Now, you do have the option of adding the DCS Vivaldi or other external clock to the Bartok. That is a personal as well as a financial decision, but anecdotal evidence points to significant gains in sound quality in what is already considered to be a top-tier DAC. Now, let's look at DCS's Mosaic app, the proprietary software that allows you to browse and play music from any iOS or Android device. Mosaic brings together audio from multiple sources into a single unified interface, making multi-source playback simple. You can use Mosaic to tailor settings on your DCS device. Mosaic also has enhanced streaming functionality, allowing you to stream with Tidal, Kobas, Deezer, or internet radio. You can also use Spotify via the Spotify Connect app. Now, if you like using Rune to stream Tidal and or Kobas, you have the option of doing so. Why might you opt to run Rune instead of Mosaic? It comes down to user experience. Mosaic is more of a minimalist approach. Calling up Kobes on Mosaic, for example, gives me a bare bones, clutter-free screen. Rune provides a more curated and visually engaging experience with lots of rich metadata, including extensive bios, music suggestions, visual elements, and much more. When I call up the Rune home screen, I'm greeted with statistics, recent activity, suggestions, playlists, and more. When I click on a track, I get tons of info right there, including an album review. Now, some of this information is available with Mosaic, but you have to click for it. Using Kobuz, for example, I clicked on the three vertical dots that appear next to each track listing. From there, I can access artist, track, and album information. I can also go to the album or artist, add track to playlist or queue, or play directly. Now, a great thing about Mosaic is that it's a custom code developed by DCS that can be upgraded and enhanced over time. Bartok's sound signature leans analytical, but it's absolutely not sterile. It's got some natural musicality to it. The sound is crisp, clear, immersive, dynamic, powerful, and detail-rich. I'm talking layers upon layers of detail. Subtleties are revealed, emotions are triggered. Highs are airy and sweet, mids are immersive and present, and bass is clean, deep, and robust. If one frequency is crowding out or dominating the others, I can't hear it. What I do hear is an insanely realistic and lifelike sound. Listening to Bartok's Violin Concerto No. 2 on the Bartok, I was blown away by the clarity and sweetness. The violins weren't just playing notes, they were evoking images of billowing sheets of satin swaying dreamily in my mind. During the quietest, sparest sections of the piece, as well as during the louder, more aggressive sections, the Bartok kept everything cohesive and dynamically stable, such that I never had to adjust the volume knob. In this piece and everything else I listened to, the sound was projected generously out to either side of my head. Now, a real highlight for me was listening to the final cut from Pink Floyd. The final cut is Roger Waters' tribute to his father, who died in World War II during Roger's infancy. The album is full of scathing songs and gut-wrenching reminiscences with searing vocals, gorgeous melodies, and tons of lifelike sound effects. The first track, The Post-War Dream, left me dumbfounded and reaching for my coat to warm me up from the chills that were making their way up my arms. The song opens with a motor whizzing, followed by a radio dial being tinkered with. Water's vocals enter with such force and such emotion. You can hear every single thing happening inside his mouth, from his teeth hitting his lips to the enunciation of consonants like D and T. Those are the things that really bring music to life and make you feel like you have a front row seat to a personal performance. Now, another thing that strikes me about the Bartok is that individual elements of compositions, the pluck of a guitar string, a piano note, an intake of breath, 
seem to have bodies and lives all their own. It's like they are at once contributing to a larger whole, while also being their own separate entities worthy of examination and enjoyment. And the fact that I am noticing this points to the fact that the Bartok does have a more analytical sound, where one focuses on details and nuance. Listening to the Bartok with the Focal Utopia headphone, which is highly detailed and analytical, would very much appeal to people who like critical listening. And objectively, this combination sounded amazing to me. However, I really loved the Bartok paired with the Hi-Fi Man Susvara, which is also a very detailed headphone, but has a more musical sound than the Utopia. For owners of high-end headphones who enjoy streaming music, the Bartok offers a one-box playback solution that combines elegance, functionality, and amazing depth of sound. The Bartok will make your music sound astonishingly clear and lifelike with spine-tingling layers of resolution and an I'm there in the concert hall or studio feeling. While I enjoyed the bar talk with every type of music, I found vocals and complex instrumentals to be particularly strong points. Chock full of features and firmware upgradable, the bar talk could well be your ticket to audio nirvana now and for years to come. If you want to learn more about the bar talk, check out our written review, which we've linked below and stay tuned for that more in depth technology video. If you have any questions, leave us a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our audiophile content. Thanks so much for watching.